Welcome to the Center for Human Disease Modeling. This is a structure that is about three years old. Uh, it's part of Duke University School of Medicine. And its primary focus is to do essentially what it says on the tin, which is to model human genetic disease. A number of years ago, we became both fascinated and terrified by the prospective increase of data derived from patients, both from population-based data as well as from individuals with human genetic disorders. And it became pretty obvious that we were faced with a significant challenge. The challenge was how to gather the data, how to interpret the data, and how to transmit the data. And all this had to both inform knowledge and inform clinical enterprise. So with that grand challenge in mind, we founded the Center for Human Disease Modeling a number of years ago and its express mission is to develop physiologically relevant assays to study human genetic diseases, to identify genes, to identify pathways, to expedite diagnosis, and then take all that and think about new orthogonal ways that could also be implemented in expediting drug discovery. There are three foundational pillars to the center. Pillar one is gene discovery. Our approach, rather than using either population genetics or perhaps in silico prediction algorithms, is to use a model organism. And our model organism of choice is the developing zebrafish. We have about 4,000 fish that we house in about 800 aquaria. And we've got a variety of different transgenic lines, wild type and mutant lines uh, that we can use uh, to study human genetic disorders. And the two questions that we might want to answer are, first of all, is a gene relevant to disease? And second of all, is a genetic variant that we identify pathogenic or not? So one thing that our center has done is to introduce an automated imaging system into our laboratory. The VAST, or the Vertebrate Automated Screening Technology, it allows us to, to put our embryos in this machine and it'll do it automatically for us. When we set up our experiments, we're collecting hundreds of, of zebrafish embryos uh, and we could customize this machine so we can have it uh, take pictures at different angles, uh, you know, things of that nature to, um, like I said, just to do it automatically for us. The second pillar has to do with both pathway dissection and transmitting this information back to patients. The pathway dissection is so we can understand pathomechanism and if returning the information to physicians and with them to the patients has, we feel, the most proximal direct impact to clinical care. When you do see the patients and you actually put a face behind the vial you're working on, it's uh, the most rewarding thing. You know, um, I think you put a, an image to your goal and you try to do your best so that to give them back an answer that might have uh, hopefully a beneficial impact on their lives and their care. The third pillar has to do with drug discovery. And this is where we take the pieces of the first pillar and the second pillar, we synthesize them with new ideas, and we try to expedite drug discovery with a major emphasis and focus on rare genetic disorders. Kabuki syndrome is an excellent example. This is a disease that affects uh, the facial morphology of the patients as well as their cognitive abilities. A patient came in who was showing symptoms of this uh, syndrome, but they didn't have the traditional mutation, and. Uh, KMTD2. Instead, there was a mutation, uh, a missense mutation in RAP1. So we used the zebrafish to model loss of function in both uh, RAP1 and the KMT2D, and we found that it helped, it uh, recapitulated some of the changes in the face morphology as well as uh, loss of uh, neurons and uh, problems in, in brain development. We were able to use the identification of the changes in uh, RAP1 type. Uh, find changes in MEK ERK signaling and then use uh, previously known and created drugs to then target MEK ERK signaling and uh, alleviate some of the symptoms. Interaction, collaboration, synergy, and diminution of barriers are some of the things that I feel strongly should be promoted in a modern academic environment. We operate one large shared space, we share resources, we share ideas, and the big notion here is that we shouldn't be inhibited 
geographically or intellectually or practically to pursue complex new ideas that synthesize disciplines. This is the most exciting time in genetics and I couldn't feel more privileged about living today and have the opportunity to contribute the little piece that we're contributing here.